Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up on iPad Today, apps for kids as chosen by you. You, the viewers. Plus, Pinterest hits the iPad, Amazon's cloud player takes on iTunes, and Google Plus now plays better with Chrome. All that and trap it on what? iPad Today. Trap it. Trap it good. Yeah. iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC from Citrix. Go to My PC connects you directly to your Office Mac or PC from any other computer and your iPad or iPhone too. Sign up for a 30 day free trial today at gotomypc.com and use the promo code iPad. And by Ford. Ford invites us tech geeks to join the conversation, submit ideas, and grab a tech geek badge at social.ford. Dot com and by audible.com to download the free audiobook of your choice go to audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today love that F the, the never, fickle finger of fate the fickle finger of fate <laughs> yes, it's, triple F sweeps us iPad all iPad today featuring triple F <laughs> and Leo and Sarah hey Sarah Lane how are you I'm very well Thank you you have the you? angel of doom on your t-shirt. I think that's great. That's very appropriate for this show. Well, I feel like I am the angel of doom <laughs> most of the time. So yeah, I thought I'd represent. And I'm dressed like a priest. So. Yeah, you. What's going on? You look. You look like a high school math teacher today, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. But you look like you're going to be up at a chalkboard your teaching me some math. Favorite high school math teacher. Of course. Okay. Math was my favorite subject yeah, in high school. Yeah. So people you would have been my favorite. People used to say that uh, about me uh, all the time on uh, screensavers and stuff. Oh, you remind me of my favorite high school teacher. Oh yeah. So I don't mind being that. That's okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Mr. Laporte, you can call me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Lane, Ms. Lane, today on iPad Today, we're going to do something. Uh, That's out of my wheelhouse. Out of our, both our wheelhouses. Yeah. I mean, I But it's really, a little closer to my wheelhouse than yours. Yes. We're talking about apps for kids. Yeah. This is a highly, highly suggested topic from a lot of people who watch the show. But, we, but we're not parents. Well, you are a parent. But my kids are uh, fully, you know, 18 they're, and 20. They're adults. And they, we didn't have an iPad when they were little. That's right. So I, I, and, you know, and, and it's a very different scare platform. Me, so I stay away from yeah. them. So I have no idea what you have. You have cats, iPads. not kids. I have cats. Yeah. They have their own iPad apps. They're a little bit different <laughs> than the kind of apps for kids. But they've got a whole category all their own. But we I had asked a couple of weeks ago. Hey, you know, this is a good topic. We certainly don't want to leave it out because we know that there are a lot of parents who use their iPad for all sorts of things. But you also have kids, maybe it's a family iPad, and you want to know what's appropriate, what's worth the money if it's not free. Because well, you don't want to be downloading a bunch of stuff only to have your kids hate it. And they tend to be expensive. And yeah. there's no way, unfortunately, to try stuff on uh, on uh, the uh, iPad. I wish there were. Well, you know, it could come uh, at a later date. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the App Store certainly could use that. But yeah, right now, there really isn't a way to know uh, besides trusting reviews of others. Watching us. Or watching words. us. So um, we're going to do... now. Uh, the the good news is that uh, an actual parent suggested many of the apps we're going to show. Yes, in fact, Matthew and Dawn, who live in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, wrote a very thorough email um, and said they've got two kids, Ruth and Wesley. Wesley's, I think, about nine months. Ruth is like three or four. So they said uh, these, these are some apps that our, our oldest liked when she was really little and still kind of likes, and there's a few other apps that are good for both kids. And then there are apps that are kind of good for everybody because they can sort of be seen as kind of like time wasters. You're stuck in the car type of a thing. Parent, kid, everybody likes it. So these are aimed at little kids. Yes. The littlest the, kids. Yeah, all. these are, these are. I would say, under six. You know what's interesting, though? The, the kids take to the iPad. I see this again and again. I see even kids who cannot walk yet, who are crawling, crawl over to the iPad and start playing with it. And I've seen two and three year olds actually use it, launch Netflix and, and launch Phineas and Ferb and watch a show on there without any adult intervention. So there's clearly something going on here. This is something kids really like. Kids, uh, especially autistic kids. Oh I mean, yeah, a whole, it's great for there's that. There's a whole yeah. uh, support system of, yep. of, I mean, that's even something that Apple um, as a company has, has recognized publicly. Wardog in our chat room says his three year old loves Fruit Ninja. 
You know, Probably that's kind of better at it than I am. That's kind of cool because you can't really give a three-year-old a machete, but they can use one on the iPad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> get them it's in, fantasy land. Get, build them up that skill. You know, move them on to an Infinity Blade, and then by the time they're adults, they'll be ready for actual sword fighting. Right. They can uh, participate in the Olympics. There uh, you go. Fencing, that's and right. Actually, bring home a gold. All right, so the first one uh, that Matthew and Don, and thank you, by the way, that was just such a nice Great email. Stuff. They've got like yeah. very thorough explanations of why they like all these apps, is the Stella and Sam Story Pack. We should call this the Matthew and Donna Show. Matthew and Don. Don, Matthew and Don, Don. Show. This is the Matthew and Don Matthew Dawn and Don Show. Show. I'm Matthew, she's I'm Don. Don. Yes. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's a... It's like Mad Men, you know, Don and Don. Don and Don. I like it. It's just, it's funny. I'm your, and I'm your favorite shop teacher. Ed. Math. <laughs> your math teacher. Oh, I math. didn't take shop. Okay. Gosh. So what, who is this? Sam and Ted? This is Stella and Sam. Stella and this is and the Sam. story pack. So basically what you get out of this, I'll go to, uh, you see that there are, uh, well, I'm in one of the stories. If I go home, you see that I have five stories here. Okay. So this story pack is basically about, like buying five little books. So this is six ninety nine. Okay. This is not free. But it's less than the books would be at the bookstore. It's less than the books yeah. would be, exactly. Yeah. They're interactive. They're really cute. And this is, um, as I understand, this is a series. So a lot of kids are like, Stone Sam, they know Stone it. Sam. Yeah. A TV series? Yeah. Okay. So if you just click on Into, Into the, the Snow, snow we, go. we Go. Oh, cute. Yeah, it's, it's cute. And you've got your little nice story. Nice illustrations. Yeah. Don't you love going now you watch the... the here, I'll turn this down here. a tiny bit so I'm not competing with them. You guys get it. You get the you get the idea now. If you want to, um, if you want. Is it interactive, jump, or they just watch it like a cartoon? No, it's it's interactive. You 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 get through um, the explanation first, and. This is just exposition, but at some point the kid's going to say. Yeah. You know we sh and I showed you. You have little like in in story games. Right. I showed you a couple of weeks ago. Remember the stuff that my kids had grown up with. Mm -hmm. um, on CD-ROM, the Broderbund Living Book Series. This reminds me of an updated version of that that's, that's really better suited to the iPad. It's prettier, for one thing. This, of course, we're like gorgeous. we're in this very long because I'm at the beginning yeah. of, the, of the story. But, but at yeah. some point, you tap it, click it, interact with it? Yeah, there's little games that you can play, like make your own shape in the s snow kind of a thing. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, and if you know your kid likes a certain chapter the best, oh, I love the part with the fox, you know, that kind of thing. Well, and that's and one thing people say, uh, somebody in the chat room saying, well, seven bucks for only five books. But little kids do the same thing over and over and over again. Oh. Yeah, well. <laughs> See, a little kid would love that. So they don't it's they like, don't mind repetition. It's in, like, what is it? Oh, hey, it's a, I found something. It's something. It's yeah, a Yeah, so, I mean, this is this is all stuff that's designed to, I mean. Oh, I this is for I a really see. little kid would love just doing that. Oh, look yeah. at that. Yeah. Found an acorn. Makes funny things. This is all stuff that I found Maybe in the snow. Whoa, there are lots of treasures under the snow. Yeah, oh, got really it? Cute. I mean, it's kind of weird how much I like these games. Clearly not designed for me, but I just think they're so adorable. I like the little, the little kid's voice. It's like I like them more than I like Ki babysitting. Kids like it when they interact with the screen and it, and it does something in response. I think that, that, that they're, they really like that. And it, boy, it sounds a lot like the Living Books voices and everything. It's yeah. very, that's good, but it looks good. It's cute. So again, this is a $7, uh, five-story pack. Mm -hmm. Um uh, Matthew, Stella when he wrote the email, said that uh, they love, um, his four-year-old daughter loves uh, playing the games, and his nine-month-old son just likes watching it. That's neat. And they said sometimes this is good in place of bedtime stories. Right. So you're kind of just interacting, parents are watching, maybe giving a little help if necessary. So yeah, it's, it's the bedtime story of the future, or of the present, I guess. The second uh, uh, app... I was about to say story, is the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's called Nighty Night HD. Nighty Night HD. Yes. There, which means implies Almost there's a Nighty Night iPhone. Kids. Almost. Really? Kind of. This got this got the uh, the biological clock ticking again. Well, the reason I like it so much is because it features animals, uh -huh, which is actually yeah, what that's I why. like that's, the most. Yeah, I almost said, and I thought, oh, I wouldn't say this. It has cats in it. This is that's it has why all she sorts likes of it. animals. Okay, in it. I almost said that, but this is probably. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the intro. This is telling the story yeah, yeah. of you know the the farm, and there's a lot of animals, and it's time for everybody to go to sleep. The reason they do these long intros though is because there are younger kids who will just watch that. 
Yeah. They don't they don't want to interact with it. And then right. the older kids will interact with well, it. Well, and the first time you fire up the app, it's fun to hear the story. I think so, yeah. You know, we're so used to being like, get past, get past this. I don't mm -hmm. need to know the intro. I don't need to know how this works. I just mm -hmm. want to click it. But, you know, there's little kids. So, for example, there's a little dog here. You can see the little lights. And this with the younger kids is really lapware. We used to call it that in the computer days, where the kid would sit in your lap and play the game. And the iPad makes it even more Right. suitable. You could sit with the child in your lap and the iPad as if you're reading a book and, exactly. and, and play together. Yeah. Now, this is the concept is as simple as can be. That's a dog. What does the dog say? That kind of stuff. Oh, this is cute. But it's time for the dog to go to bed. So I turn off the light and then it says... <laughs> Good night, dear dog. It's British. Yes. Good night. Good night, dog. Then I say, well, where are we going to go next? Let's go into the barn here. Discovery is a big part of these little kid games, too. They want to be able to... Right. Have now fun things happen yeah, by surprise. Yeah, and it's subtly saying, like, here's the light switch over mm -hmm. here. It's time for the cow to go to bed. Now, I don't know why I love this so much. Good night, dear cow. I don't even need a kid on my you lap. Know, this is interesting, because this reminds me of Good Night Moon. One of the ways you get kids to go to bed is... Good night, Everyone's Moon. Good going night. To bed. Everybody's going to sleep. Yeah. This is that's what this is obviously for. That's cool. It's adorable. Look at that jacket. This is not this is lapware. This is really for you as a parent to do with your Oh. Let's put the little Good night. Good night. Good night, dear chickens. Good night. This is the modern good night moon. I love it. I absolutely love it. Is it just good night, good night, good night? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's pretty much it. And um, how much is that one? It's a dollar. 99 cents. See, that's great. Yeah. 99 cents in the App Store. I got to tell you, I went through 10 copies of Good Night Moon when Abby was little. It's a, it's a cardboard book. It's a board book. Yeah. But she would tear it up. Actually, we had different kinds. She, just, she would tear it up. She would chew it. No, this is, she was, <laughs> she, but she would, she would she bite it. She was a yeah. baby. Yeah. And you love that book so much. I love Good Night Moon. This is, this is Good Night Moon. Now, I, I hope the kid doesn't chew up the iPad, but I don't think they can. Well, they're going to hurt their teeth. They'll lick it. <laughs> yeah, there's there's less incentive. Uh, the next app is called Bubbles. Bubbles. Uh, which is, by the way, I think these are all universal apps. Uh, well, maybe maybe not 99. 99 HD obviously HD isn't wouldn't because, be, yeah. Uh, but Bubbles certainly is. This is, Matthew says, not only a great app for kids, but a great app just for mindless entertainment when, again, you're stuck in traffic or something. Ooh. Bubbles. Yeah, I could see giving the kids in the back seat this and saying, right. okay. And saying maybe something like, how many bubbles, Right. you know, can you pop? This is all it does? Yep, this is it. <laughs> this is the modern right bubble wrap. Name. Oh, I like this. Oh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Boy, I mean, is that simple. I mean, there's nothing to it. Yeah. Nothing to it. But if you've got a really little kid or a kid who's... I don't know, new to iPads or, I mean, just something where th there's nothing to learn. I think so, a, for a two-year-old would probably just love yeah, this. Well, and the th yeah, you know, the, the, the sounds are fun. I know lots of adults that do those bubble wrap games. Remember the website that was just bubble wrap, popping bubble wrap? Yeah, I mean, when bubble wrap comes popular. to our studio now. We fight over it. Yeah, I have to yeah. get, have it taken away from I me because I'm very disruptive. My, yeah, my side. The bubble wrap wars. Yeah. Yes, that's Bubbles. Bubbles. It's, uh, it's Bubbles. real simple. Oh, that's Hog Bay Software, Jesse Grosjean. I love him. He does great Mac software. I think, as I remember, Jesse had little kids, so he's probably a dad who was just kind of inspired to uh, to do this. That's great. Internet and in chat says, there are more po pointless adult games than this. You're right. Jesse's a great uh, great software uh, author. Really has a great sense of style. It just, You know, it, it seems like, okay, I got it. How can you change the color? Look like you can change the colors and stuff, right? Um, you haven't figured out the interface yet? Give it to a two-year-old. What do you mean, I haven't figured out the interface? <laughs> Looks like there's different kinds of bubbles. I'm yeah, just saying. You can buy different bubble sets. Oh, you buy them? Yeah. These oh, are Jesse, you smart man. There you go. Bubbles or claymation faces <laughs> both come. Comes with claymation. F oh. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to go nuts, I mean, if this is your kid's favorite game ever, you can buy more stuff. I just don't want to say this is only fun if you end up spending four dollars. Uh, that's yeah. not true. Now it's 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 actually increasing in uh, in fun. Yeah. yeah. Man, I ought to grow up one day. Um, and finally, Tesla toy. These, what's so nice because I've never heard of any of these games because again, I read it. Not, why would we not? I'm not in the right market. I love for this that kid. That good night one is really. Great. Isn't it cute? Yeah, I can see why you like that so. I love it. Yeah. Man, there's so there's, there's little burn animals. I want to live on a farm. Did you try the cats and the bubbles? Um, no, they don't even like the cat games. Very they don't much. go for the fish games or the. They just look at me, you know, because yeah. I'll go play, play, and Surely, then they look at me like, "What do you want?" You're not asking me to pretend yeah. that that's a real mouse on that on ice that skating thing. rink of. I'm sorry. This little thing. Finally, Tesla toy. Not too different than Bubbles, actually, um, but it's uh, it's just a, like a little visualizer. 
So, you know, you hold your hand steady. Mm. You get kind of a neat thing here. Mm -hmm. You can, you can uh, move mm. it around. Mm. The color changes. Mm. And then if you go quickly, mm -hmm. you make kind of neat stuff. Mm. I don't think I'd like that either. Uh, you I don't think, it's think just you'd like it either? A little boring. You don't have any liver treats, do you? Oh, you're being a cat. Oh, yes. I was like, geez, Leo, tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't no, know. No, no. That, that wasn't the science teacher talking. That was a cat. No, you that's can really also, cool. Yeah, as a neat. kid, you can be like, ooh, neat. You know, I'm, I'm making these neat designs. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take can a picture. Can you save them? Oh, you can? Yeah. Ah. It's kind of weird, though, because it goes away so quickly. Yeah. You Maybe need, if I you turn need sticky more fingers on. You need percep oh, per persistent. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ooh, sticky fingers. Yeah. Ooh, more fingers. See how many touches you can do. You should yeah. be able to do so, 10. Oh, sorry. I should have said uh, yeah. initially, God, that was a very Canadian sorry. Just then, Sorry. that you can do multiple fingers yeah. and make things more interesting. Yeah, I see. Yeah, so you know, you got little kids, little hands. They can go, they can go buck, they can go buck wild. We can go anything from. Huh. Uh, yeah, you can this is hours of fun. I can... Yeah, it's just neat, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just fun. <laughs> hey, look at us. Save that. Some sort of a wormhole. <sighs> Saved. Wouldn't it be cool if it actually were? A wormhole, yeah. and this was how we went to into the uh -huh. next dimension. Yeah, we just went through this. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Good for ninety nine cents. Yeah, for uh, it is. It's one ninety nine actually. Oh, for Tesla Well, no, what? Then it should be. A, there should be a yeah. wormhole in there. This is neat, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it uh, very enjoyable. Neat. Yeah, for kids. So those are four quick ideas. If you don't have any of these apps downloaded, you've got. Uh, Stella and Sam Story Pack, you've got 99 HD, you've got Bubbles, and you've got Tesla Toy, and I have the, uh, the, the folks, Matthew and Dawn, and Ruth and Wesley, who are the good testers of the family, to thank for thank these you. really good ideas. We, we got a lot of ideas um, from a few, uh, few of you guys because we had asked a few weeks ago, hey, if, you've, if you know of kids' apps, let us know because we're not experts. That's something we're not expert. We can't, we can't really judge because yeah. you need a little kid to kind of to tell you whether that's a yeah, good thing. Yeah, and you don't, like, they don't, people don't want to rent their kids out for things like this. We've tried. I have. I say, I as, I want to rent your kid <laughs> for iPad. He's a cute kid. He's a, that's a cute kid. He's a cute kid. Yeah. 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 And I as says, no. No. He will, he will not be part of your he little experiment. He will not rent his kids. No. Yeah. For your money and your fame. We had, we built this Skinner box and uh -huh. um, we had a little cheese, a little cheese it nozzle and the whole thing and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> Smart kid. Smart kid. Uh, if you missed any of the apps that we mentioned, something looks good to you, you think it might be a good gift, you're an aunt or an uncle, that sort of thing, you know, you can think outside the box. Even if you don't have your own kids, we will have all of our links on our episode page at twit.tv slash IPT. That's the main page. You can click into any of our episode pages from there. And all of our links are, are right there, as well as our video and a little information about the show. Mm. What? Now in HD. Yeah, we've got HD feeds. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I'm so excited. Now, HD to us is only 720p. Because we, if we made them 1080p, the file sizes would be really out of control. They're already big. So a word of warning, if you're on a limited you know, uh, bandwidth, if you don't, for instance, if you're using your Verizon or your AT&T iPad, uh -huh. you probably should wait until you get to Wi-Fi. Right. But, because they're big. I don't know. How, how, big, how big is the HD uh, file? It's for an hour Bigger. Show. It's a couple of gigs, than I a think. Larger. Yeah. Or it's a gig. So anyway, uh, but Except they look they, great, especially on the iPad. We they're also, fantastic. We also, you know, we now have HD. We have large, that's basically SD. We have small, which is great for mobile. And then we have audio. So it's, it's like actually, we've, we've got everything covered. The large is ED, enhanced definition. It's 480p. It's DVD quality. Okay. So there's 720p HD right. quality. There's DVD quality is large. HD, and then the mobile ED, is SD. Mobile, so SD. So it's HD, ED, SD. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. We don't H -E -S. use those designations because I don't think people really know or care. It, well, it's more of like, will this look good on my device? Exactly. If exactly. you're watching on the biggest, biggest TV ever, you gotta have the HD. So we're feed. pleased. All of our shows yeah. will be HD, but it just takes a while to roll them out one month. Yeah, after we, we we have been finally rolling out, turn. and finally, um, iPad Today is part turn. of that rollout. Quick reminder if you watch the show on demand, thank you so much. We don't really care when you watch the show as long as you like the show, but if you wanna watch us live and aren't already, we do record iPad Today on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific. Right, right after Leo? Windows Weekly. <laughs> would be the accurate way to put that. <laughs> roughly one, so one, roughly one thirty. One. Right, I'm sitting here at one. So she was. She was sitting here going. Well, I always sit here at one because I figure 
if I'm not, then you'll say, well, you weren't ready either. Uh, but I'm in chat and, and you know, oh, I'm, you I'm hanging. So thanks to everybody who watches live and, and uh, um, participates with us in our chat room. That's what I'm pointing at right now. And says things like herp derp, very helpful stuff. Um, and if you have app ideas of your own, because we're always looking for suggestions, you know where to go, iPad today at twit.tv. Yes, and indeed. And tell us all your deepest, darkest secrets. Mm, and we no, will you read them dramatically that. next week. If you do send them to us, I will read them dramatically. Good. I'll make that deal too. Have you seen those Yelp dramatic review uh, readings? <laughs> no. It's very funny. That's pretty funny. You know, funny. Yelpers are so dramatic. They are dramatic. And so when you get a dramatic reading, this it gets fun. restaurant was so bad. I that would be fun. The server looked at me funny. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Uh, we, get, we get some of those emails actually too. It's summertime. You, you, you've done summertime your vacation. Summertime and the living's yeah, easy. Are you done with vacation? You got another trip somewhere you'd like to go? Well, we're probably going to be in France in December. I consider that a trip, even okay. if we're working. Okay. I think a lot of people take August off. France takes August off. I know that much. Yeah, it's very hot there. It is. I tried not to take August off in France, but you're no, right. A lot no. of Europe takes July and August off. Sure. And maybe you're planning a trip to the Poconos. Or you just want to, you know, maybe go home early and spend some time at the pool, enjoy the nice weather. Well, I got a way you can do it and still stay in touch with the office. Because nowadays, business is 24-7. You travel, especially if you're like me, if you're a small business owner and you want and you want to leave, you're afraid of what you're going to miss. This is a great product for you. You can take your iPad on the road and still access your office computer. You can see your office email, send and receive, run any program. You can access any network resource. It Really, the whole office PC is there. It's as if you're work, but you're not. And of course, you know, it's go to my PC. It's an amazing. It works on a Mac or a PC at the office. And then you can use any computer or your iPad. You can even use an iPhone. Brian Brushwood on Twit this week was showing me how he, he was using his iPhone to uh, and go to my PC to watch Flash. He had a Flash animation or Flash, I guess it was uh, some sort of statistics he was watching on on uh, book sales for uh, the Diamond Club. And it's in, it was kind of in Flash, so of course you can't do that on the iPad or the iPhone. He fired up, go to my PC, went to his home computer where it's installed, and he was able to see it on his iPhone, on his iPad. It's just an amazing thing. I love go to my PC fast. By the way, very secure, and that's important. Uh, it's a hundred. I, they, I, there, to my knowledge, there's never been an exploit with Go to My PC because it uses some very important technologies. SSL for one to encrypt the, the, the conversation you're having back home, but also uh, it uses NAT traversal. So at the office, you don't have to put a hole in the firewall. It's very secure. IT department loves it because you don't have to call them. Visit GoToMyPC.com. See that orange Try It Free button? Yeah, there's the free app. But do first do this on your desktop at work or whichever desktop you want to access on Mac or PC, click the Try It Free button and you can, well, try it free for 30 days. Just make sure you use the promo code iPad at the bottom there. They say optional. It's not optional. You have to use my promo code iPad so that we get credit for it. And then hit the road and download the uh, the Android or the iPad or the, uh, there's the iPad version. It's just, or actually there's the iPhone version. It's fantastic. There's the iPad version. Go to my PC. Dot com. Try it free right now. Just remember to use the promo code iPad. And then hit the road. Enjoy what's left of summer. Do you feel the end of summer coming? That it's kind of starting to... I feel like it is. Well, summer's weird for me because in San Francisco it's cold yeah, it's in the freezing, summer. it's always. I mean, it's not always The nice cold. weather is coming in San Francisco, September, Actually, October. Actually, that's true because the fog starts to go away. But it's not, it's not like it's, you know, beat the heat type stuff. Yeah, we get summer here. Though. Up here, though. Yeah. But, I mean, we're inside the studio and we're working. And I don't know. I don't feel like... I went to Vegas last weekend and that's that summer. That's summer. That's crazy. How many people were in that swimming pool with Probably you? Probably like 3,000. That did not look sanitary. It wasn't. That was disgusting. It was the opposite of sanitary. Was it a was party? A what was it? Yeah, there's the, so you know the Encore, right? Hotel and Casino. Yeah. It's the wind. The, the one next to it. Yeah. Um, they have several different pools there, but one of the pools... It's, which is like a, a hassle to get into is called the Encore Beach Club. And we were like, Beach Club, that sounds Sounds nice. good. I'd like to go to the Beach and Club. And they're like, do you want a cabana? Do you want a lily pad? The lily pad's sort of on the edge of the water. And we're like, lily pad, that's mm. perfect. There's an umbrella, right? Because mm. I don't like to be in the sun. Mm. And it was like a crazy, psychotic party. You put pictures on Instagram and Path. <laughs> it looked like there was one person in every square foot. No, I mean... It was jammed, jammed, people, people, jammed. People were sharing our lily pad with us, not because, I mean, they couldn't help it. I would kick people off if they were being idiotic or smoking or something, but it was the most... Didn't look like fun. How long did you stay? Seven hours. It was fun. 
It didn't start out fun, but then you just got to join them because you can't beat them or something it's like that. It's the Grand that. Central Swimming Pool. Hey, it was, it was, it, you know, this is one of those things, it's a spectacle. You stayed all day? All day. <laughs> they had blueberry mojitos, they were very good. Aha! Uh -huh. Just it, saying. That's the secret. But yeah, that's summer. Wow. That's not actually not a normal summer for me at all. That's maybe the weirdest thing I could ever do. But it was fun. What do you, yeah, you know, you gotta just. Uh, no, I'm glad go, I, I saw the pictures because it actually made me feel wild. like, it actually made me feel glad that I wasn't there. I yeah. was like, that was oh, kind of what I was trying to convey I'm is. so glad I'm not you there. You could have been me right now, oh. hanging out oh. with the crazies, wearing the stilettos in the pool. There they were no wearing high heels them. in the swimming pool. What's yes. that all about? I guess it's. You don't, don't want to take them off because you're afraid somebody will steal them? I think it's more like I look it's better. A, it's a fashion. So that's what I'm doing. I don't know. They're crazy people, insane, insane people. Hey, Leo, let's not talk about Vegas. Let's talk about something that actually is pretty sad. Mixel. Now, Dying. I love Mixel. This is the thing that uh, you actually, MG discovered it, and he spent well, a lot of time doing it. I don't and then, think he discovered it, but well, I mean, he was, he was, he was into the it. first in our crowd yeah. to spend hours doing collages. I never quite got why he liked it that you much. You mocked him. I think it was a little girly, but I'm not going to say anything. Well, the thing is, is that he was the only person that I knew that I that really liked Mixel until one week you were out of town, or you, for some reason, couldn't do the show. Gina Trapani was my special guest She host. loved it, too. She loves it. She says it's, like, soothing to her, and she likes the creative aspect of it. So you don't have to be an artist. People offer little bits and pieces. You know when it got really big was the pepper spray guy pepper spray cop and people would have a little kit with the pepper spray cop That's right. and then they'd mix it in other stuff. stuff it was you could remix stuff now you would do Michaela is not impressed right and you see all of the the meme things of, of, of Michaela who's part of our fab five gymnastics team at the Olympics doing that when she won the won the gold medal she was like no she's silver silver she fell she knew she deserved that gold it was a fluke she was not impressed so they took the picture of her going like this yeah and then put it on all sorts of, yeah, that's good. You got it. That's the look. Yeah. So you know how to do that. Impressed. So anyway, so this is a tool that <laughs> would hard. let you do that, but what, you went bankrupt, what happened? Well, no, the, so this is actually the interface. This is, um, you know, it's kind of like mixed media stuff. So if you right? have it, you still can use it. This is something that I made. Yeah, so this is, I had download, downloaded this a while ago. So it's, it's not like it's getting pulled from my iPad. It has been pulled from the App Store, though. Oh, no. So if you don't have it, you can't use it anymore. This oh. is one of my favorites. That was a really nice mixel that I made. Isn't it pretty? I guess you can't make it any bigger. Oh, yes, you can. It. Oh. There it is. Well, now, see, now I'm getting into editing mode. Oh, so. it's mixing it, remixing yeah, it. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> That's pretty funny. it's fun, but I always felt like this is fun once or twice, or I have a specific meme that yeah. I want to push out. I can't see going back. The result isn't all that compelling, and apparently uh, the, the world agreed. For the most part, yeah. I mean, you've got some really talented artists who can make something right. really cool um, based on uh, other images that, that people are adding to the pot, because that's kind of, you know, you remix other people's stuff. But the CEO. Um, said, uh, we've decided the time has come to pull this first iteration of Mixel to rest. Mm. They're gonna, they've pulled it from the App Store. They say, uh, come September, none of this actually will be active anymore because wow. we're actually going to yeah, take it off server. of our servers. See, this is the problem, and this thing always makes me nervous. When a company's not charging for the app, the app was free. Mm -hmm. They're not charging for the service, but it uses their resources, their money, because you're running a server. That's right. Um, and, you, and you say, well, how, how is that going to work out? How are you going to make money? And I guess they just realized that they weren't. You know, Kevin Rose's Oink, for example. Oink shut down. The company kind of dissolved. Some of them went to Google. They offered uh, an export tool. So anything that you had added into Oink, you can export. But now I have that as a file somewhere. And it's like... What are you going to do with that? The service doesn't exist anymore. Right. So, it, you know, it's all of a sudden it's time and effort that I put into something that I feel like it's nice to be able to give me my data back in some form. But, yeah, you kind of have to assume... Not all of the apps that we talk about are going to succeed no. or even be around next year. In fact, I pay attention to that. If there's something I really like, I want to pay for it or I want to see if they have a business model. Otherwise, you've got to assume that eventually it's going to go away. Right. Kevin was on Twitter. I don't know if you saw him on Sunday. He talked a little bit about that. Yeah. And deciding to pull the plug on Oink. He said, it, you know, we had, I can't remember, three or 400,000 users. Right. Um, but, it, but it just wasn't enough and uh, it was time to move on. And then along comes Google and offers them all a job and it was kind of a hard, uh, hard thing to turn down. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's... it's, ha it's it tough. happens. We, we forget. Uh, there's something that, about humans. We only live in... We, have, we only live in the time zone that we're in. We forget. 
Apps come and go all the time. All the time. There was actually a really um, good article that I read this morning, and uh, now the name of the guy who wrote it is escaping me. Andrew Chen, maybe? Anyway, um, he was saying, this really feels like 1999 all over again. Yes. Yeah, it's not a bunch of like home delivery services bringing you groceries to your house, but we've got a, a lot of apps where it's like, team gets a little investment money, enough to run a few servers, hire a few people, put out something that looks nice. Okay, then you add Facebook Connect, and now a bunch of people are sharing it on Facebook, and you get a nice, you know, you get a couple people a writing viral. about you, yep. and so then you get to a certain amount of users, and you feel on top of the world, and then growth stagnates, and then you pivot. And it's now and what? And then you, yeah. yeah and you know so. what's different? Of course, I lived through that. You're too young to remember 1999. I'm but. not too young. <laughs> But you were what, I was, eight? I was working but, <laughs> full time post college. You were in delivering papers? What were you? You had a route. Right. So, I was uh, watching 99 <laughs> HD over and over. Um, the, uh, the difference is a couple of things. I don't think we are exactly in the bubble of 1999. You're certainly seeing a lot of creative ferment. But what's different is it's much cheaper and easier to do this because of Amazon's EC2 and, and, uh, and Microsoft and uh, other companies, at Google, uh, App Engine. It's easy to develop a concept, put it out, and at, at a much lower cost, try it out and be successful. There's a much more vibrant vi uh, vi virtual uh, venture capital and angel investing uh, community. So there is money out there. The biggest difference is you don't have the overheated stock market and the IPOs you had. And that's what really killed a lot of these companies was these big public offerings and then just collapse. Although Facebook might be, might be, might be a counterexample. Well, because its, it's is, stock is, is like, half what it was. Sure, right? these companies won't all IPO, but then what are they doing? You know, so so many of them have to offer services for free. They're hoping to sell to Google because, or Yahoo because that's exactly. But then there aren't enough of those big companies buying the small companies. Right. I mean, the Instagram thing everybody, that is that is everybody knows. One in a million. I think everybody knows it's kind of a crapshoot. That's the the entry level. The cost of entering it is so low. Yeah. That if you just said, I think you should do it. If you're out of college, you're a programmer, you got a great idea, write some software, do it on uh, App Engine. Sure. Or, yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't shy away from you, making a product you know, just because... Maybe it's one in 20 or one in 100 chances of, of, of making money, mm -hmm. but if that's better than nothing. Well, and some people go in with a business model right off the bat, so... That's what I like. Yeah. That's I what mean, I like it's, to it's, see. It's, people approach this in all different ways. I think it's really fun to download the stuff and try to figure out what's going to stick and are they fulfilling a need that I have. And that's what we do. That's, that's our job. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the fun part of my job, but as somebody who watches the show, you know, some of the stuff that we talk about, it's like you have to keep in mind... You were poor, skeptical poor about Mixel. I, I remember. I knew. Yeah. I knew. You knew. You, I will say that. Yeah. I you were knew. you were skeptical. Yeah. If somebody would have said, "Should I bet money on Mixel?" I would have said no. Although the company is not going away, they are merely refocusing, and they apparently have a product that's different that they're going to introduce soon. Huh. So we will be waiting with bated breath uh, for the next iteration. And uh, as long as it's an iPad app, we'll talk about it on the show. Hey, so guess who got an iPad app? Speaking of them. Little company called Pinterest. Finally, big, big in the big in the women community. So I hear. Is there a women oh, community? <laughs> yeah, there's like fifty percent of the world, or so. Really, that many? Uh, yeah, I think it's actually more than fifty. I think fifty percent of the world longer. uses Pinterest. Yeah, so Pinterest um, is a extremely what? You could use it on the iPad and Safari as a browser, right? You could. So this is and how. Has let's been see enough. the let's see the app. Is how is this better? Or uh, it's just it's just a native. Uh, it's, okay. it's a native app. So I'm I'm in my uh, my account and I'm looking at art right now. If I go ahead, and I can just go ahead and search by popular or animals See, or design. See, this or you could do on Safari. The real thing I'm curious about is the, the key to the desktop Pinterest is it's easy in your browser to pin something. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want to, but this is, can you, can you do that? Does it add a pin it? Of course. Why would they make an iPad app <laughs> where you couldn't pin anything? That's the whole point of Pinterest. Okay. If I go to, okay, the people that I'm following, <laughs> sorry, but I mean, that was a silly question. Well, that's, then Oops. I want it, that's, yeah, okay. First of all, it just crashed. It just okay, crashed. Okay, a good start. So, yeah, all I was trying to do was go home, uh, don't send, whatever. So if I'm like, okay, that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. That's Fairy beautiful. Tale ponds. So you can repin it. On the Isle of Skye, Scotland. Yeah. yeah, I can go ahead and either share this, like this, or repin it. Okay, Very so that's nice. sharing it back to your Pinterest stream. That's correct, yeah. And then if I, if I um, am, let's see. This, is, this looks I'm good. I'm browsing the web here. Yeah. Oh, so it has a built-in browser, so you could yeah, exactly. be looking around. And yeah, stuff. so the, so if I'm if I'm looking to share with my community, um, I can go ahead and load something up. 
I'm gonna use twit.tv as an example just because, I don't know, why not? And then you go ahead and pin it, and this is at the point where this works just like the web version of Pinterest. What's our best thumbnail here? Certainly not that one. That one looks you pretty good. You and me, baby. Yeah. So what, do you use Pinterest? I don't use Pinterest on a daily basis. When I was a part, you know, no. hunting for uh, furniture for my apartment and decor for my apartment, I used it for that. So just to kind of bookmarking. But I didn't get, I mean, it didn't seem like such a great better thing than just putting it in Evernote or bookmarking it. I, I guess I'm just anti-social. That's the problem that I have with Pinterest as well is it's a bookmarking service. Right. It's just visual right. and has, you know, it, that appeals to a lot of people. But it's not like we don't have other services where you, you right. you're kind of remembering to come back to something. Right. Although there is a little bit more of a social aspect because, again, you are see, seeing thumbnails. And if it's something like design ideas for my new apartment, you can have a whole pin board that I could look at rather than That's be what clicking I a bunch of links. Yeah. And I do know people, uh, uh, Tanya Hall, who's a radio host in Colorado, uh, is, is like crazy about Pinterest. She's posting, f you know, dozens of things every single day. Oh, yeah. I mean, so there are people she, who just she love and it. millions of others, of yeah. men and women yeah, yeah. and dogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, uh, dogs? Yes. Dogs are very dogs big have on Pinterest. Pinterest. Huh. Probably. I'm just going to go ahead and guess I'm that guessing. somebody has a Pinterest account. A cat for dogs. would never use Pinterest, though. No, cats love Pinterest. Oh. Yeah, especially oh, okay. in the, you know, the. You've How got about farm, barn animal, farmyard animals? Farm animal, why not? Yeah. There's something for them, too. <laughs> okay. what's, what's nice about Pinterest, uh, this app, is. I'm getting it right now. It kind of, in a way, even though the website is nice, it works just fine. A lot of what I actually like about Pinterest is a Browsing. product. That I like that then I can click through and buy. Oh, can you do that on this? You can, yeah, you can, you can do that oh. with with any product that someone shares that then clicks back to a website that allows you to buy it. Whether it's you know I don't know an Amazon page or the a product page on some independent site, but I like that about Pinterest. So I always find myself, you know, I end up looking in the art section because not only do I just like to browse art, but I like to if I see something I like, like if I was like into this Marilyn Monroe picture, let's go ahead and you click could through. Buy that. And see, well, I don't know yet. Now, the, an interesting Art. thing. Art.net galleries, yeah, so this is yeah. something that I could buy. An interesting thing is... Because that's where it was originally shared from. You could, in theory, even make money as a pinner right. on Pinterest because you could put an a, a affiliate, affiliate code. Affiliate link, yeah. And they'll leave that in. I know Pinterest puts their own in as well for if, it's, if there isn't one. That's how they make money. And see, I don't mind that because that's a business model. That means Pinterest will be around. I want them to make money. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love it that you could also make... I wonder if anybody's making any, you know bank on uh, Pinterest. Well, probably. I if mean, somebody's there's, doing some good yeah, stuff, I guess. Yeah, if you've got a so. popular enough account sure. and you're spending enough time giving people what they want. I mean, this is, I think for a lot of folks, this would replace something like a blog of uh, Sarah's design blog, right. coolest stuff you'll find online right. this week well, type of a thing. Like if I was keeping that up and I had really good taste, someone would want to... That's a lot of ifs. Well, hello, <laughs> if, hypothetically, I had good taste... <laughs> in furniture, um, I could make a blog or I could just create a Pinterest page. It's kind of already set up for me and it looks nice. And I, 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 I like the idea. You know, it just reminds me a lot of Tumblr. Uh, you could do, a lot of people do that with Tumble logs, yeah. Tumblr. But I, but I, I know I like it. I prefer Pinterest almost. Do you? The, the, the Tumblr accounts where, it was actually something I found on Pinterest earlier and it was like a sparkly scarf and I was like, oh, that's really nice. I wonder how much it is. I clicked through and it was just like an art Tumblr page oh, that somebody yeah, had shared. Yeah. So sometimes you get into like a dead end and you think, well, I mean, what am I supposed to do? Just look at this picture for the rest right. of my life? I right. want the scarf. Um, <laughs> okay. But maybe that's just because I like calm, online calm shopping down. so much. It's, it's good, though. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so Leo, yeah. maybe we should get off of Pinterest because I'm getting a little too heated up. Yeah. Google Plus app has been updated and it does something pretty cool now. Oh. I should try it. What does it do? If I didn't even know. If you also have Chrome, the app installed on I, your iPad, which I do. you do, yeah. and you click on a link, an external link in Google+, you now have the option to open it up in Chrome as well as Safari. I'm surprised Apple allows that. Well, why wouldn't they? They allow other companies to do this. This, is a, this is a developer tool that Apple gives uh, companies. Well, not just companies, but anybody who's right. who's writing apps. So, in fact, Google published code uh, for other app developers saying, hey, if you wanted to have links open in Chrome, here's what you would do. And there's simple code that you mm -hmm. could put into any uh, iPad or even iPhone app that says, 
Does is Chrome installed? If yes, open this in Chrome. If not, open it in Safari. So, so Google's obviously like. just implementing it in their own code. Yeah, Google's like, there's nothing wrong with this. It's legal. This, this is yeah, this is Apple sanctioned. So let's say, all right, I'm looking around. I want to open up this link to I don't know the Food Network, whatever. Um, go ahead and get the recipe. Now, what happens is there's there's kind of a like a pseudo browser. It's like a viewer that opens up in Google Plus. This but, is in Google Plus. Yeah, okay. this is in Google Plus. But let's say that I now want to open it up. Uh, it used to just be open up in Safari. Now I have open in Chrome as well. I can choose neat. to open in Chrome, and there it goes. Neat. Yeah, it's neat. Now Chrome doesn't have access to the what's it called? The it's like the Nitro Java engine that Safari does. So you will notice that things might not be as snappy uh -huh. when you're opening stuff into Chrome. Yeah. But if you're like, I don't want to use Safari, and maybe you do feel that way, or you love Chrome or whatever. I mean, whatever the reason is, it's nice to have options. And this is not anything that you have to do back end on your own. As long as you have Chrome and Google Plus installed, it just shows up for you if you want to um, open it up that way. But I did have the same reaction at first, like, huh, Apple's huh. allowing that, huh? huh. Interesting. I don't know why. I just assume that they might not. But I, of course they'll allow that. They allow Chrome. Why wouldn't they allow uh, apps to link back to it? Well, and if you start stripping out certain functionality, then it's like, well, I mean, is, are all Google products right. going to go away? Right. I don't right. know. Maybe. Some are. It we just, know that. It would just tick people off. Some are, but I think oh, you're talking about maps, right? I'm talking about YouTube and I'm talking about maps. But, but those are both going to be standalone apps. Replaced. That Google will just... Right. Um, uh, we presume... We presume. I. We don't know. I'm positive that Google will submit those apps into the App Store. Would you care to make a small wager? Well, because you don't think that they'll submit no, they those will. apps into no, the App Store, I, actually, I'd like to make some money. I have a history sure. of, uh, what, what of making like of lose? making losing bets. So okay. Uh, don't 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 How read much anything into that. in your wallet? That. I will take it. <laughs> Whatever's in my wallet, you will take. I yes. Wow. Yes. I won't even feel bad about it. What and about, I'll go and then on I would Amazon take, and I'll buy all clad cookware. Which you did. Which I did with your money yesterday. It was, my, it was not my money. It's a long story. <laughs> it was not my money. Well, it's the company's When you money. buy an app on that iPad, though, that is my money. Well, it's the company's money. The company's money. No, the, the, the cookware I bought that on That was a Amazon. gift. You, it's your money now. That was your holiday bonus. Okay. You're allowed to spend that. It's it not my money. It started out as your money. Well, a lot of things start what? out as my money. <laughs> <laughs> that, that new coffee machine waiting for me at home started out as my mom. Uh, Did you take the coffee machine home? Um, no, I forgot. But maybe it's, I will. It's today. very high. You may not be able to reach it. Well, all. I'll need a very Ask tall me. Ladder. I will climb down up and get that for you. I think I'm probably more nimble. We have a, an old coffee machine. You. No offense. That was sitting. You're more nimble on a kitchen counter. That, I mean, Would you like to make a me. wager on that? Yes. You're gonna hurt yourself trying to <laughs> win your wallet back. That's a new game. What's in your wallet, and are you more nimble on a kitchen counter? I think this is going to be a great show for for our next season. <laughs> yeah. Instead of will it blend, who's well, more nimble? Who's more nimble? Climb this rock. It, oh, that's it. It doesn't have to be on a kitchen counter. It could be on anything. Yeah. Who's more nimble on right. dot, dot, dot. And then the audience votes, and then I haven't thought the rest of it through, but I bet <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how the magic happens. That's I right. I just want you to know it's just that simple. Um, are you mm -hmm. uh, wanting to mm -hmm. answer a question mm -hmm. that Ben asked? Yes. This is a very sort of like very broad question. Usually the Ask Leo questions are like, how do I fix this thing that is not working specifically on my computer? Ben says, Leo, do you think print magazines will survive much longer or will the iPad be the way of reading them? You know, it's interesting. I think print magazines will last because I still see people buy them at the grocery store, getting on a plane with print magazines. Uh, I love reading on the iPad, um, and, and I do, you know, we were talking about Next Issue a few episodes ago, and I, and I think it's great, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to replace it. I think even, even more than books, people like magazines, don't you? When you went on vacation to Vegas, did you bring us, People Entertainment Weekly, and... You know, just kind of enjoy, have a, like a gossip You assume fest. so much about my interests. You, you would assume correctly. <laughs> I thought I did. But it's I not did. like I told you I bought those. No, those. see, I didn't here's have the, to know. I knew that. Here's why I bought those very three magazines or magazines like them. Because Tom Cruise was on the cover. No, that's old news. Oh. I've already read all that stuff at the gym. No, Something the, about The Bachelor. The reason is, is because if I have internet access, then I don't need those magazines. But on a plane, exactly. I don't. 
I guess I could load some stuff up ahead of time, but even when you're taking off and landing, you can't have anything electronic on. So it's like you just want the magazines, and then you just leave them in the seat back when you're done. It's, it's still easier to read a magazine. I'm sorry. Yes, I have Next Issue on here. Yes, I have The New Yorker on here. It's too much work compared to flipping through a magazine. I just think it's easier to flip through a paper magazine. Now, here's the pressure that's going to perhaps have, have it happen. It's, it's already happening in the newspaper industry. It's harder for these companies to make money with their display ads. Mm -hmm. And the ink and paper and delivery is getting much, much more expensive. And that's really almost killed the newspaper industry already. And I imagine this will happen with all printed materials. It's just very expensive. So unless something has a real premium audience and they have a way of reaching that audience and advertisers want to buy ads, uh, or maybe subscribers want to pay for the uh, magazine, I think it's, it's the economics of it are going to get harder and harder. It, it's so much cheaper to put a magazine on an iPad. It is getting to the point now where, I mean, there's certain, I don't know, cafes or whatever where everyone's still reading the New York Times, but sometimes I'll see someone with a bunch of newspapers spread out, yep. you know, and I'll go, gosh, yeah, it's, what a mess. Yeah. It's so much easier just have yeah. your iPad or something out, you know, or whatever, you know, your I don't, tablet or your laptop. I have to admit, I do not take a newspaper anymore. I love reading the newspaper, but you know why I don't take a newspaper? Because I also love sharing the articles. I used to cut them out. You did? Put, yeah, when, that's what radio, this is called radio prep. When you're doing a radio show, you'd yeah, cut out yeah. the articles and you put them in a manila folder and bring right. them in. And now you just go share, 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 bookmark, bookmark, bookmark. That's like I use Flipboard for Sometimes that. there'd be like an editorial or something, and I'm like, so-and-so would really like this, and you mail them. You mail it to you them. Mail How retro is that? story or something. So when exactly. I'm reading a newspaper now, I find it very frustrating because I want to share this, and I, what am I going to do? It's on a piece of paper. So uh, Flipboard has, for me, replaced, and you know what? I guess it's even replaced magazines, but, but, but I think that I am unusual in that regard. Well, I don't think so. I, I, I love Flipboard. I... I, I read it all the time. All th I read Flipboard every, every morning. Single day. I get up and, I, and yeah. this is my news. That's actually usually what I do before I go to bed because mm -hmm. I've got a lot of my fun mm -hmm. feeds that I don't really have time to get to uh, the rest of the day. Absolutely love it. And this is more like the kind of thing you do with a magazine where you're not really, it's not purposeful. You're, well, the thing you're about flipping Flipboard through pages. Too, is it's that like, you're not yeah. reading a single magazine, you're reading whatever right. the heck you want. You're you not really it your reading. Own. It's More like than a reading. few paragraphs at all. You're just yeah. kind of browsing. But it's not like you're reading people. Yeah. That would be its own app type of a right. thing. Right. Um, I think that's probably the way of the future. More so than all of the newspapers becoming digital versions is all of the newspapers becoming parts of a subscription service. Maybe almost even like a cable subscription where well, you get all a, of your stuff. In a way, that is place. the future, but newspapers don't like that idea. Well, they, no, and it's not really good for consumers either because then you have fewer options. Right. And, Fewer a la carte options. All right, uh, today in iWeird, this is weird. <laughs> Chris from Glendale writes, Hi, Sarah and Leo. I was just at my local Sears and I overheard the manager talking to another company. He was explaining how he was testing a new system out using the iPad as cash registers. He went on to say that by next year, all regular cash registers are going to be replaced by iPads in Sears. Chris actually took a photo, but it came out really blurry. <laughs> but I like your investigative journalism here. That's good. I have it. I'm going I to have believe proof. you that you're in a Sears and you're looking at people talking about how they're yeah. going to replace all their registers with iPads. Doesn't that seem like an unlikely combination to you? Uh, iPad and Sears? Well, you know that Not Starbucks that's... and uh, just been a big investment in Square, which yes. is this point of sale it's technology similar to what they want to use. Yeah. And um, I guess they have some sort of an aging system, and this just makes sense. Yeah, Starbucks is going to be using Square. You know, somebody uh, was quoting uh, the new head of J.C. Penney, who's uh, the guy who started the Apple stores. Right. He says, we're getting rid of clerks, and we're going to do it like an Apple store. We're going to turn J.C. Penney's into the same kind of clerkless uh, automatic checkout that, that you get at the Apple store. And I just think that's not the future of in-person retail mm -hmm. because service is so important. Now, point of sale uh, in terminals, as long as they don't replace the cashiers and make me check out. Do you ever use the uh, the, uh, the self-checkout at a grocery store? It's yeah, horrible. I do. But the thing is, is like they always have an employee who has to watch all of us doing it because people always get it wrong or they're like trying to scan alcohol and they're not allowed to or... I, mean, I realize I I'm mixing just, two they things just sit together. They're watching us, and I'm like, you're not actually saving a right. job right now. I realize I'm mixing two things together. I mean, the square thing doesn't mean that there's not a human. In fact, the human interaction element is better right. when you pay by square. Hello, Sarah. Yeah. They know you, they see your picture. You say, hey, whatever your name is, uh, give me a coffee. And they say, sure, here. And you walk out the door. Right. That is a great experience. Yeah. So I think that whatever happens in the future, and I, it will have to be something where service is improved, the relationship is improved, 
uh, because that's what brick and mortar stores offer over the anonymous, but much less expensive and faster online. Now, obviously, coffee, you're always, but Sears, do you need to go into a Sears store? I mean, can't you just buy it online most of the time? Well, I mean, if that were true, then they wouldn't have steer, steer stores. Well, you want to look. At, you want to look at that lawnmower. That's right. They want to talk to somebody. They want interaction. And can you imagine? I mean, I don't know anything about lawnmowers. When I go there, I really want to talk to the guy who knows about lawnmowers. But do you trust that guy? Well, I mean, I figure he works there and he answers these questions all the time. So yeah. All right. I mean, who else? I'm so just going to trust my instincts. In, in answer to the question, I do. I wouldn't be surprised to see better systems that facilitate the transaction that are better for the customer but you're not going to get rid of the human the whole the whole no. purpose of this look at apple stores they have they have employees the you can't have even a ton of them. you cannot even go into an apple store without actually talking to a human who says at the beginning what are you here for right how can i help you yeah i mean and they're busy all the time yeah it's it's no yeah. it's the right way it's the future of, uh, of retail can't get rid of humans uh, sears we're up we're on to you well that's the question is are they going to use these to no, I, improve I think that or use them to I think they, yeah they probably have an old register system sure. and they're going to streamline it somehow and kudos to you kudos Did, to you sears what page of the Sears and Roebuck catalog, did you see that item in? I used to love the way that Sears always smelled like popcorn. Yeah, the catalog or the, or no, the place. The, the oh, they do that on purpose, you know. Because it makes you happy and you yeah. stay? They have a popcorn, make the little popcorn stand there. I know, and my mom would always be like, that stuff's really stale, you don't want that. Doesn't matter, that's not but the I point. I loved the way it smelled. It's why many stores have, I liked about have little cookie bars. I didn't like Sears otherwise. We'd always have to go in there and fix watches and stuff that kids don't like doing. There's always a, like a watch fixer stand at Steers. Like yeah, that. I need a so new we got, battery. We got yeah. yeah, I got to fix yeah. this. Something wrong with a second hand. <laughs> Your childhood memories never cease to baffle me. Actually, <laughs> all those hours in Steers <laughs> fixing our watches. We just liked being on time. Unlike the Laporte family, didn't. Do you have anything else, or are we done? No, we're should not, I talk about Ford? Yes, okay. Leo. Gosh, I'm just waiting. You know, I'm waiting for my cue. Today. Ding, ding. It's time for. Actually, this is new. This is something new. Ford's doing. They have a new site. Yeah. Social.ford.com. Have you seen this? Yes, I have. Social.ford.com. So it's really kind of like forum. Well, it's it's a lot of things. There are articles. In fact, I wrote an article there talking about a conversation I had. It's in the uh, technology uh, section. Uh, with Jim Buchkowski. He is one of the lead technologists uh, there. Uh, and we, we talked about things. Well, first of all, one of the questions I always ask the Ford folks when I meet them is autonomous vehicles. When we get vehicles that drive themselves. And mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about, he, he has, the Ford has always said, look, we're going to add these technologies that make it safer and easier for the driver. Uh, we're not going to take over driving just yet, but right now what we're doing is using technology, things like um, lane departure warnings. So if you, there's a camera on the car that is actually looking at the lanes and sees the, the lines. And when you go, veer, it actually, because you're, you're leaving your lane. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, just awesome stuff. The, the cameras can also do a lane centering feature. I don't think these are implemented yet. Lane centering feature. Um, Why don't you fix your mic They have here. this thing called, can you hear me now? Well, it's just rubbing a they little They have this bit. thing called um, workload information management. So if you're on the road and it's getting more, it's rainy or there's a lot of traffic, where these are all ideas of, of, of kind of, you can read about this in the article, actually. But if it's getting rainy, it's it, workload information. They, they reduce the amount of distractions in the car because you need to pay more attention. How to use the cloud to connect vehicles with your home and office. So this is all at social.ford.com. My, my interview with Jim Buchkowski is there, at least my converse. There it is. Um, but also, and there, if you go to the top there, you can also submit ideas. This part I love. Because people always have these uh, these ideas like, if only this were possible, and Ford's actually listening. Yeah. They want to know what I you'd bet like you, to see in a car. I bet you they get some ideas that uh, continuous power for plug-ins. Bring back the Pinto. Not going to take off, okay? Generating some electricity by mechanically moving parts. You know, somebody actually suggested, I think this is a great idea, a wind turbine in the car to, to help charge the lithium battery as you're driving along. Yeah. Automatic I think that was submitted sunscreens. by a kid. No, no, that was the biodiesel hybrid. Oh, the biodiesel hybrid, right. So they don't currently have a biodiesel, a hybrid powered by French fry oil. Why not? Why not? 15 year old thought that one up. So, oh, and when you're there, get yourself a badge. Now, there's, I, I already got the Mustang badge. Because you've got one. Because I have one. I'm yeah. proud of it. I love the classic one. The four, but just slide over one uh, page. 
there's a Tech Geek badge. See that? Isn't that cool? Yeah. I love that. It looks kind of like a like a RFID or something. I want this badge. Get that badge. Excellent choice. You know, 6,739 nerds have, have, you, have chosen this badge. I bet they have. Why don't we make it 6,740 right now? Social.ford.com. Take a look. This is a brand new Ford social site. One of the ways Ford is entering the 21st century. State-of-the-art car company. Let's go to some of our viewer feedback. Yay. The first one is an email from Mikey the Chimp. Uh, he's a party <laughs> columnist in West Hollywood, California. I don't know what that means. Wow, I he want that writes about job. partying, I You'd guess. You probably spend seven hours in Vegas Just, in a giant pool. Well, he doesn't have to leave L.A. to do that. No. Although everything is bigger and better in Vegas. He says, Leo and Sarah. Yes. Any reason not to delete my NBC Olympics apps and the official London app? Isn't it a huge <laughs> loss of revenue and audience for them that millions of people have opened up this channel on their iPads and their phones and now we're all just cutting it off? That's a really great question. Yeah. Well, I mean, this happens all... The Did you delete them yet? No. I didn't either. Well, the thing is, is that there is still archived video. Oh. So... It doesn't but take but, but then it's like, how how often am I really going to go back to that? Maybe for the next couple of months, if I want to reference something in particular, and then I'm going to forget about it. You know, here's my Why question. Why not keep, how, yeah, and How many times do people delete apps at all? Do you go through from time to time and delete apps? Well, only because I fill up because of the show. Chat room, do you go through not. your uh, iPhone or iPad and delete apps? See, I, my theory is that, in fact... NBC and the 2012 Olympics, we recommended both those apps, are still on there. Remember, they've got notifications. Mm -hmm. During the Olympics, I would see somebody just won gold. Yeah. or Maybe we'll start seeing notifications from them. Hey, don't forget me. I've got something cool. Have you tried the new NBC app? Have you seen Seinfeld lately? It's a great show tonight. That kind of thing. Yeah, NBC. Those are the kind of notifications <laughs> NBC is going to use to their advantage. Well, the hey, Olympics were old. Have you Seinfeld. watched the show that was, that was canceled 20 years ago? Now, I'm it's very really interested. really good in syndication. <laughs> I'm very interested. <laughs> Many of the people in our chat rooms, in fact, do delete their apps. Yeah. They, they do a little app hygiene. I think that's smart. Maybe if I'm not using an app, on my iPhone it matters more to me, I guess, just because, I don't know, it's I should probably go through. and the, the real estate is more important or something. I have a whole folder of Olympics apps, I but guess I could But there are them. apps sort of like this that kind of become useless. So, for example, uh, you know, MLB 2011. Right. But then they push out an update and it becomes MLB 2012. So the app itself sort of ceases to exist, but then it blossoms into something else that's relevant. Now, I guess NBC could do this, but they're waiting four years. Well, they're waiting two years for the winter, but another four years for the summer. So it's like, I don't know, four years. Nobody You're not going to save it for four. But another reason I don't delete apps is because it just takes a long time. You have to hold it, it jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. It is you not press the hard. X thing. No, well, maybe it's just mine. Okay, so now it says delete. Well, that wasn't too long. Well, here's what you do. Delete. Oh, I guess it doesn't. I guess it's games. If, cause the games take forever to delete because there's game center data, and it, that was pretty quick. You organize. Fact, you as know, long you as I'm deleting, let's get rid of this. On your MacBook, you organize everything. No. You get all the stuff on one page that you want to delete. Uh, oh, that was a fifty dollars. And then app you go ahead deleted. and boom, 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 boom. Mm. Get rid of them all. Really, just like that? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, the one I showed last week, Oria. <laughs> <laughs> and you're done with it. No, but you can go get it again, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That, yeah, that's actually a very good point. There's no real risk. If you risk. delete something and, and you've bought it, iTunes right. will remember that. Um, you, can, you can download it again if you want it back. Got a voicemail from Todd, who is a Ford fan, speaking of Ford, and has an app pick. Ooh. Guys, what's going on? It's Todd in Southington, Connecticut. I uh, just had an app review. Uh, I know Ford's a sponsor of uh, Twit and all that, but I'm looking at the new Ford Fusion Pretty excited for it to come out, and uh, in the app store, I found a great uh, app called MFT Guide. And what it is is basically a simulator for the uh, My Ford Touch technology that oh. I'm hopefully going to have in this new car. And um, oh, you so open you the app, and basically it brings up uh, exactly what you'd see on the touch screen of the My Ford Touch in the car. And basically, I'm ready to use My Ford Touch when my car comes because. I've just been using this. It lets you, you know, touch all the buttons that you could touch um, on the car's interface and kind of brings you through all the menus and settings and all that. Uh, really, really cool. Again, it's called MST Guide. Hello. In I the am App Store. It's put out by Ford. It's free. And uh, have a great day. Thanks. 
So this is this is actually That's awesome. That Ford never told me about this. Isn't That's that, great. When I, when he first called, I was like, yeah, some like Ford ripoff thing. No, this is a it's Ford, from Ford app. This is called MFT, so letter M, letter F, letter T, guide by Ford, and it gives you a really That's good... That's what you would see behind your steering wheel exactly. on a, my Ford Touch. That's hysterical. So it's a Look simulator, and it gives you, if you're on the fence and you're like, I don't know, what am I really getting here? I listen to these guys on Twit, but I don't know. Wow. It gives you a very, very good simulation into what actually you are able to do, you know? What, what it's going to look like, what your options are. That's really a good idea. Isn't that great? And I like it yeah, that it's I from Ford because, totally you know, that. they have updated the UI. People complained it was a little hard to use, and so they really pay attention to this. And one of the neat things about it is that they can, there's firmware in the car. They sent people, 300,000 users, a USB key to update their My Ford Touch. And I presume then that this app updated as well. So that's the, I think it is. It looks like the latest My Ford Touch interface. That's cool. Neat, huh? Thank what you. A, they are, that, I'm a great company. That's Thank awesome. you so much, Todd. That wasn't even a paid commercial. No, no. In fact, they never, Ford never told me about I this. I thought it was going to be some, yeah, I don't know, some other company wanting to bank on the Ford yeah. thing. It's great. Also available on Android. Yeah, the there's a little, that, that voice you heard, there's a little like animated welcome. If That's you're sort her. of looking at this going, oh, I, I still don't know what any of this yeah. is, they'll kind of walk you through it. Got a video. <sighs> okay, um, this video is from Sam, and it's kind of like dropping acid. So, hi Sarah Lane, hi Leah Laporte, I'm Sam, he's Sam, and there's nothing we will not say without each other. Today I'd like you to talk about the great app, Anti-Crop. It's a very interesting <sighs> app, it's like crop, but anti, check it out. Also, I'd like to talk to you about iOS 6, and they have these new emojis. If you haven't noticed yet, you shouldn't, Try it out now. They've got a moon, they've got a sun, they've got everything. Okay, I'd also like to note that we I have a new show on YouTube. It's called Modern Prodigy. Check it the be out the beta version. And then um, uh, I'll see you later. Thank what the hell? <laughs> no idea. I watched it three times. I'm not sure what the anti-crop app is, first of all. It's like cropping, but anti. Chad, do we have this kid's YouTube channel? Don't can... understand. He is a kid, right? I, I'm, I'm trying to... I modern I Prodigy? Is that sound like Modern Prodigy. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. what we'll he's talking about with emojis... That is very cute. I like it. With emojis... Yeah, I love emojis. And if you don't know what emojis are, um, it's... It's the little, uh, what do you call them? Like They're little characters, uh, I guess. Yeah. That you can use. I've actually downloaded like mini, a, mini icons. A third party emoji program. Yeah, but if I wanted to tweet out something, you know, I don't know. Well, like, can I show you? I'm you don't have to use a third party program anymore to turn those on. Did that's you know true. That? That's true. I just, I like this program because it gives it me a lot you. of okay. really silly emojis, well, like the whale. Those are the standard emojis. No, these are cool ones. Oh, they're all. Sarah Lane. Leo Laporte. Those are the actual emojis. Okay. Fine. You don't need a third party app to see those. Well, I have downloaded <laughs> some emoji apps. Yeah, but their emojis are standard. And that's what's interesting. That's the, what the modern prodigy is, if that's his real name, is pointing out is that they now have new ones like the sun and the moon. <laughs> yeah, because I've never known how to express myself without the sun emoji before when ever... I was, you know, walking around on a hot sunny day. Why am I downloading these emoji apps then? What am I doing? Well, you used to have to do it. So, well, that's um, what it, yeah. So it's, it's it, old, You don't have to do over. it anymore. It's the, it was the old way of doing things. So you have to turn it on. It's in international keyboards. But once you turn it on, um, you have, just as you were showing, all of the same. In fact, they're a little bit maybe more legible than the app that you, you were using. These are all the emojis. These are these are a standard character set. They're very heavily used in Japan, and that was the point. Was at first Apple thought, oh no, we'll never turn these on on the iPhones. It'll just confuse people. But in fact, people wanted them, so there were third-party apps that would trick the iPhone into into putting the emojis, uh, uh, making them available. But now it is just part of the international keyboard set. So if you turn on the international keyboards and choose emojis, you'll get all the. Uh, all the emojis. Love, I love them. I love emojis. I know I some people are, are never going to... I mean, you either think it's fun or well, you don't, but I sometimes we play games, my friends and I, where like I text something, like exactly. I'm trying to get something it's like across a rebus. to you. Yeah, let me... Yeah. And then on the other side, the person's like, okay, there's a swim, like the surf, 
and then there's a you know French fries, and then there's like a person crying. The only negative on the emojis is it's not doesn't seem to be cross platform standard. So no, because you get those little boxes sometimes look, yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. For, depending on how you're, you're using a Mac it. or an iPhone or an iPad, you're and fine. You're, you're fine. But, but you have to assume that some people just aren't going to get. Right. I wouldn't do it on Twitter. What you're throwing down. Right. And look, our chat. Yeah. See, there you go. Right yeah. there. Yeah. But our chat room is sending some emojis, and the chat client that we use apparently will show those emojis. So like a wheelchair, emojis. an alien, and a chicken. Yeah. What does it mean? It's fun. I like it. Yeah. I love I love emojis. By the way, someone else in chat um, said that the anti-crop program will take a cropped image and attempt to... Um, that sounds dangerous. ...recreate what got cropped out of it. Does it work? I don't know. I've never heard of it before. Hmm. I never heard... I. Don't tell Cat Schwartz about that one. <laughs> Leo Laporte. Sarah Lane. Leo Laporte. iPad Today. iPad Today is the show that you're watching right now. And we love to hear from you. Uh, whether or not you are a twin or have weird programs, or I mean, we don't care. We'll take anything and we'll show it. Uh, write us at iPad Today at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 757-504-IPAD or send us a video. We love seeing you guys. So, um, thanks to everybody who writes us and, and calls us and, uh, and videos us every week. It's somebody told me that uh, they really like watching this show because it sometimes seems like you and I like each other and have known each other for a while. Oh, that old ruse. Ah, don't know her, <laughs> never met her. Don't like her at all. Total jerk. Yep. Hate this guy. <laughs> really uncomfortable. Get your hat. Oh. It's well, almost app cap time. You have to give it to me. Get your hat. You have to give it to me. Can you get us a hat? Someone, someone get oh, us. Oh, I have the hat. You have to give it to me. I'm going to sneak you the hat while I'm talking about. Sneak me the hat. All right, I got a good one for you. I know you're going to like this. As long as it doesn't have bells, because I know don't, what? I don't want to upset the the cycling community that I, listens to us and. I am not very nimble. No. I can't quite. I mean, no. Okay, there's your hat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get up on a, on a counter, and, and then you'll see and Nimble. And then, yeah, we'll, you'll see we'll really Nimble. see who's boss. Have you ever got ah. a, Has this ever happened to you? You get up on a counter, and you can't get down? Yeah. Happens to I'm up, and I can't get down. <laughs> exactly. I've been <laughs> nimbled. No, I, I usually can get down. You see if there? I can get up, I can get down. No. you got to get up to get down. No, because it's like climbing a tree. Sometimes it's easy to go up, but then backing, backing you know, down is hard. You know hard. who would agree with you? Your a cat bear. Or a bear. Bears, they go up real quick. They can't go downhill. They tumble. If you're ever running away from a bear, you go downhill. I don't have to run away from bears. I just have to run away from you, and then the bear will eat you, and I'll be all right. Well, so I... let me show you, ladies and gentlemen, something okay. very exciting to me personally. It's right. called Audible.com. Have oh. you heard of it? Yes. Great place. 100,000 books. It's the ultimate audiobook store. And I am in that wonderful state right now where I have just finished a book this morning. I actually was late for work. I was driving around the block for the last few paragraphs of Stephen King's Stand, like the longest book I've ever read. It just was, it went on and on and on. Finally, it's done. Mm -hmm. Now, I get to pick a new book. And this is like, actually, if you're new to Audible, this is the conundrum that faces you. 100,000 books. What book should you listen to? Aud go to here's what you do. Go to audible.com right now. Browse around. They've got every category, fiction and nonfiction. I'm looking at the Audible app. By the way, this is a great app um, what this does which is i think really nice is it lets you see everything in your audible library whether you've downloaded it or not now i have been listening to audible books let me refresh this because uh, this there's a lot of new stuff in here i've been listening to audio auto, audible books f since 2001 i have 500 books and if i wanted to listen to one i can listen to anything right now and it, but I, and then I have no new books that are coming up, which is really wonderful. I, Audible is just a great place. This is on the iPad, on the iPhone, uh, on Android, on Windows Phone 7, um, audible.com. So here's the deal. You go to audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. You'll be signing up for the one book a month subscription, which I recommend. That's what, that's what I would do, at least to get started. Then what you'll get is the first month free, your first credit free, and uh, and so you could pick a book, listen to it, cancel it anytime, pay nothing, but that book is yours to keep forever. I just don't know where to start. There's so many great books on here. Um, I think my next book. Oh, I don't know. I can't decide. There's just so many good books. 
I just listened to Kill Decision by Daniel Suarez. That's wonderful. Right to Richard Dawkins, The Magic of Reality. I might listen to that. Um, Night Soldiers by Alan First. This is this is like a thriller, World War II historical thriller. Uh, oh, Ready Player One. You got to listen to that. And Will Wheaton narrates it. The Great Story by uh, Ernest Cline. These are all in my library. What will you put in your Audible library? That's fun. Figure it out. It's six, 47 hours and 56 minutes, the stand. Whoa. That's a long book. Holy crap. Most books are about eight to ten hours. Do you think, there's ever, like, do you think there are the stand audio people out there who are like, I'm going to do it in one take. No sleep. No, you can't. That's two days of nonstop well, reading. Well, I mean, it could be done. Yeah. You'd just be a little nuts <laughs> be, at the end of it. You'd be crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Here's it. Do it for free <laughs> for the first Audiobook book. Audiobook marathon. Oh, I love this one. This is one of my favorite books, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Uh, and it's a uh, full cast narration, which means all the different voices mm -hmm. are acted out by actors. Really comes to life. That's a great one if you like Neil Gaiman. Audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. Your biggest challenge today is to find a book because there's so many good ones. It's hard to pick just one. Audiblepodcast.com slash iPad today. Give it a try today. Feeling patriotic. I don't you, know why. You just look feeling great. It. You know, I thought I that. I look marvelous. I thought that hat would suit you. You know, I wanted a sparkly scarf and I didn't get one, but I don't care anymore because I've got this sparkly hat. It's so big. It just rolls right off of the screen. <laughs> it's, it's actually too big for the screen. It's too big. And it's this, too and this hot. is it's my hat. It's too hot for this TV. Your hat is also very nice. Yeah, you look like you're going to go fishing and knit. I am your favorite math teacher. Just That's right. That. Yeah. yeah. You've, Mr. you've become the really nerdy math teacher who says, I'm going to wear this silly hat while I teach Rectangles you Rectangles are cool. equations. Hey, so my app cab this week is called Trap It. And before the show, somebody in chat was like, Trap It. Did you guys know about Trap It? And I was like, yeah. You must trap it. What is Trap It? It is a, yet another way to read the news from a variety of ah. sources. Now you might say to yourself, oh, gosh, aren't there a million of those? And the answer is yes, there are. But they're all a little bit different. And I really like Trap It. And by the way, this isn't just an iPad app. It's uh, if you go to trap.it, that's the trap web, it. web service as well. So you can sign up for an account and all that so stuff. So is it like bookmarking? Kind of, well, it's more of a I tell Trap It what I'm interested in off of the bat. So for example, I've just added some categories. I've got Apple, I've got fitness, food allergies. I don't really know why I'm so interested in You don't in. have food allergies. Well, I do. I'm not sure what they are yet. <laughs> But you know, there's something out there something that's going to cause you to swell up like a puffer wrong fish. With me. You just I know, it. know about One it. One of these days, you're going to eat it, and you'll to, be sorry. I have to blame food for my imperfections, right? You, wait it's a minute. Because of my food allergies, and I'm not smarter. You say I know I have a food allergy. I just don't know what it is. I don't know what food it is, but no, I actually do. Like I get hives sometimes, and I think. But it's you don't food know why. Related. I am not really sure why. Could, anyway, it doesn't have to be a food. It could be a person. But, person, place, or thing, exactly. I don't know. I, it could be anything. Food allergy, I've added as a category. It could be a hat it's So allergy. sue me. iPad is another hat allergy. iPhone, new music. Okay, so these are just categories that I went in and said, I want to, uh, I, I want to read about that. So let's say that I say, new Apple retail chief makes mistake and fire. Okay, I'm interested in this story. I go ahead and read the original story, which was on Ars Technica. So it gives oh, me. Oh, I want to read that. Yeah, it gives me a nice little. So here's here's he the. Fired his staff. Word. That was a mistake. Let's go ahead and read the full article the way that it's supposed to be read. Well, that didn't render very well, no. did it? No. So is this supposed to be like readability, where it makes it all cleaned up? Well, it's. It it's, looks like what it did. It took the content out and left the ads. Well, I don't. I don't it's really kind of, know what it's happened. It's kind there. of negative readability. It's not supposed to act that way. The opposite of readability. Yeah. Let's go ahead and read the full article. This is how it's supposed to. It's supposed to actually load within uh, Trap It from the Sun Sentinel the way that it's meant to be. So this is, you know, an article that I like, and I go like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's fine. So um, it did generate that list by itself. How did it do that? Do you know? Well, what do you mean? Like, where did those come from? I, t I told the, uh, tr uh, Trap It that I wanted iPhone-related content. Yeah, and then it, it just said, okay, here's some. Yes. <laughs> this is not that different than other news readers where you say, I'm the kind of person who wants to <laughs> How see... How does it know? Because it's pulling from a variety <laughs> of sources. Okay, Stupid. Just <laughs> like Pulse News Reader or News.me oh, or... Oh, yeah, or yeah. Zyde or... Yeah, like that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's the general But Flipboard idea. gets it from Twitter. Is it getting it from your RSS feeds, or is it no. just, it's got some sources that Exactly. It you could almost think of it as even like a stumble upon, Did right? you, did you, you specify sources, or does yes. it? Yes. 
I went through and I oh. said, I want some Got articles it. on iPhones. Got it. That is one of the categories that I No, chose. I understand that, but you didn't say Ars Technica, or did you? No, I didn't. Okay, so no. it has some sources. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right, so let's go back to uh, the general. Okay, so this is these are the uh, categories that I went uh, ahead and said, this is what I'm interested in, right? Um, I can also add... Uh, Wait a minute. There's somebody in the chat room saying this is derived... From a DARPA project that the Defense Department paid for the research I don't that know gave this. rise to trap it. It's the same project, Kalo, that gave rise to Siri. That's is that true? If it is, that's I If I, you just tuned in, would you take this show seriously? Of course. Okay. Would you take would you not? No, why I don't I know. I mean why, why not? we're talking about DARPA. And I'm in a glittery hat, being very patriotic. <laughs> the, 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 the Defense Department's Advanced Research Project Administration. Well, DARPA. that's very interesting because this doesn't seem like a DARPA project to me. Kalo was the cognitive assistant that learns and organizes. And according to the Trappet website, this is derived from that project. The most ambitious and successful uh, artificial intelligence project in history. That's very interesting. Yeah. So let's say that I, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in uh, this uh, article on TechCrunch about tablets not doing very well. I can go ahead and read the original article. I can I want this. start you like it? browsing Does around. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to say, and of course, this is an app cap pick, so this is something that I like. You know, I'm, I'm not supposed to have problems with it. I think that a lot of people will say, this seems like other news readers that I might already be using that work well right. for me. And it is. Right. The whole idea is to say, I want to read more of the content that's interesting to me. You could do that by curating uh, people that you follow on that's Twitter. What, that's what Flipboard you does. You could do that via Flipboard. Right. You could do that via news readers that get smarter over time based on what you're reading. Um, this is just, it's a nice, well done, uh, it kind of reminds me of like Windows 8. Type Somebody's going to win this game. That's what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. I'm very curious, uh, and if this has advanced technology behind it, maybe this could be... The winner, I like Flipboard, but it, Flipboard is a Twitter feed. Uh, I'm going to try trap it. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's uh, completely free. Again, um, if you've got an account on Trapper or if you make one, then stuff that you save as a reading list on your iPad app or on the web app would be synced, which is nice. But then a, a lot of these apps do this. I think this is just yet another way to be able to get stuff that um, delivered to you that you have specific interest in. So you so uh, so I'm just using it for the first time, and so they've they th this is where you set up what they call a trap, mm -hmm. and so you used iPhone. I think that's good. I'll I'll do iPad, and and then so it's now going to just create a trap that will trap stories from. I gather uh, you don't get to really do you, do you choose the the, the, sources? the sources. No. I mean, I, I, if you can, that's not a feature. I okay. don't think so. I don't it's think, interesting. I don't think that's really the point, right? Uh, because if you like if it. you were choosing the sources, then you would just go to the source. If, if it's smart, yes, that's the thing. I want to see if this is really smart and can really predict the stories I want to read. And it, is it using what I uh, read as a signal to improve it? Yes. Okay. I like that idea. Yeah, I do too. All right, Samsung Galaxy stuff. Note. I'll and then if you want it. to save it to other sources like Instapaper or Evernote, you have that option as well. So if you're in here and you're like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and browse to death, but I don't actually have time to read 50 articles, right. and you're an Instapaper or an Evernote user type of a thing, then you can kind of use it as the first pass before you, before you add it to a reading list that you're already using. So you don't necessarily have to just make up another one. Uh, the trap it. I like it. You, go. Wow. Yeah, I'm interested. I'm gonna. I just downloaded it, and installed it. I did not know anything about that DARPA connection. Ah, uh, no, I didn't either. I, I was I, reading it uh, from no the chat idea, room. And the so chat room never lies. That's awesome. I, I'm just. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and you know the new like the new Dig app, which is an iPhone app, is also really I think good. I think we're seeing a lot of interesting uh, news readers. Dig, of course, is human generated. Uh, Trap it looks like it's done in, uh, with artificial intelligence. So we, I don't know if, did we, you say we talked about the Amaz the fact that Amazon MP3s, the Amazon Cloud Player, uh, now is more like iTunes Match. For $25 a year, mm -hmm. uh, you can match, don't have to upload, but match your songs that are in your iTunes library or anywhere else on your hard drive. They'll replace any songs that you, da that you have on your library with 256 kilobit MP3s. That's one difference from iTunes Match. 
It uses MP3s, not iTunes AAC format, uh, without copy protection, and stored in the cloud. So I ran the, uh, the Amazon uh, Cloud Player Importer, which you can download. They have Mac and Windows versions. Uploaded 8,000 songs, except I didn't have to upload them. It just went through them, just like iTunes Match does. Mm -hmm. It said, oh, yeah, we got that, we got with that. Uploaded the ones it didn't know. And now, if you haven't uh, tried it, I would recommend it. It's an iPhone app. Um, so it's not, you know, the presentation's not gorgeous. But it's music, right? But it's music, so, so. really you don't care about the presentation. The, the cloud player from Amazon, it's free. And uh, uh, like an iPhone app, of course, it only does it in, uh, in portrait mode. But this is what's interesting. Now all seven, th there's two different tabs here, cloud and device. There is some music. This is music I synced with iTunes on my device. But there's also literally now 8,000 new songs in my library that come from my desktop computer that I uploaded. This is from my, um, let's just play a little Andre Previn, Rhapsody in Blue. Now, it plays very quickly. This is not on my hard, hard drive or, or uh, storage. This is coming from the cloud. Yeah. Plays within just a few seconds. It's great. Quality is good. I'll turn it down just a little bit. Um, you get the album art and so forth. And what's nice if you're running out of space on your iPad or you only have a 16 gig iPad is this is not going to take up any space. It caches it. No, that's the disadvantage too. You have to be online to use that. Mm -hmm. But this is, you know, a true cloud player and like iTunes Match. Now the difference is if you use iTunes Match, it actually downloads that song and it's now on the storage device. Uh, that's good because if you're offline, you can still play it. It's bad because it's going to use up memory. This doesn't use up memory on the disc. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good to have both and there's no reason not to. Um, so this is new, uh, the, an update to the Amazon Cloud Player that will actually play music from your collection in the cloud. And what's interesting is for the songs that I, you know, are not obviously in Amazon, like this is the, the, screen, the old screensavers theme. I don't know why it, 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 Amazon doesn't have it, but it doesn't. So, <laughs> so it uploaded. Uh, it this uploaded is not the old this. screen. So I'm thing, playing it off right? the cloud. It's the return of the screensaver. It was theme. the uh, return. Yes, it's actually the old twit theme. Yeah, right. From Mark it sounded Blaster. like the screensaver's yeah. theme. We we call it the the. Uh, he says the revenge of the screen sizzlers. That's <laughs> funny. To avoid copyright because infringement. Because of all the apps that that I download, I know you download too. Uh, particularly we don't have a lot of space. For show. <laughs> exactly. It's like I don't actually have right. space to put a bunch of music on my iPad. But I listen to music on my iPad exactly. constantly. Right. Now, some of that is is streaming services that I pay a monthly uh, fee for. But if I can just access music that I already have somewhere else, that makes perfect sense. And if you buy music, as I do often on, the, on Amazon, their MP3, it's uh, automatically in the cloud player and you can listen immediately. You don't have to download the song. So I just bought a new album, the new Peter Gabriel live album, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm listening right away. So that's great, too. Are you like, in your eyes, the live version is the best, man? It's actually a good song. Do not mock. I'm just saying a lot of people say things Do like that about In Your mock. Eyes, the live version. I'm not mocking. I'm mocking the people. I'm not mocking Mr. Gabriel. Do not Mock. And that will do it for this episode <laughs> of iPad Today. Thanks to everybody for watching and listening and putting up with our hats and our antics. Our antics. God, our antics. I'm our sick of them. Antics. I don't know how come I you're don't, not. I don't know. Yeah. You know, let's pull the bug on this whole thing <laughs> before we kill each other. But thanks to everybody for watching. We'll see you back here, same time, same place next week. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.